Hello, I'm Stephen Harper and I'm from Northern Ireland. I've been married for almost 30 years to my wife Gail and we have one adult son. I've been involved in full-time Christian ministry for the past 17 years or so and have spent a significant part of that time living in Malawi, Central Africa. That's been a life-changing experience for me and one which I wouldn't change for the world. I still love to visit Malawi and I'm privileged to be able to spend about 10 or 12 weeks there every year. I've been a Christian for over 40 years now and although I was born and raised in a so-called Christian home, I haven't always been a Christian. I have, however, always been a sinner. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and that means that we've all fallen short of God's holy standard and we've fallen short of God's purpose for our lives. Going back to my later years in primary school, I distinctly remember a time when I became aware that I was not ready to meet God in my sins. Although I was still young and had never committed any dreadfully wicked acts, I knew in my heart that I was very definitely a sinner. And I began to become concerned that with my sin I could never hope to be in heaven and that I was in danger of perishing eternally. Around that time I remember hearing a presentation of the gospel message and in the course of his message the speaker quoted a verse from the Bible that has since become very, very precious to me. That verse is John 3.16 and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I still remember considering that the word whosoever in the verse embraced me. It says that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son for the world. I realised that if God loved the world and if he was offering the gift of eternal life to whosoever, to the world, then the world and whosoever included me. In that moment it dawned in my young heart that if God had enough confidence in that work and in that person, then I can have confidence in him too. In a very simple act of faith, I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, that was over 40 years ago, and I'm still trusting him today. God has never let me down. Christ has never let me down. I've always been influenced by peer pressure, and there were years in my teens and 20s when my Christian testimony was not very bright. That's why my hope is not in myself or in what I've done, but in Jesus Christ and what he did. It's my great joy in life to share this good news with anyone who will listen. My confidence in this message urges me today to urge you to trust the Lord Jesus too. Let me remind you of that verse again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I hope you'll trust in him. If you do, you will never perish you will receive the gift of eternal life. Thanks for listening.